right, today we're going to knock out some potato soup. We're going to start by cubing up some of these potatoes so that we can go ahead and get them tossed in the pot and get those boiled while we do some other work. So to start with, I'm just going to dice these. They're going to be about three-eighths of an inch, maybe maybe a half inch dice, as hearty as you like them. These have already been washed. As you can see, they've not been peeled. You can peel them if you'd like. You don't have to. It's whatever your personal preference is. With that said, let's get at it. All right, all done. Now we're gonna put some salt in here and some water. Don't worry about the exact right amount of salt. To be honest with you, go fairly heavy on it. Potatoes suck up salt a ton, but do keep in mind that you can't reverse that. You can always put more salt in later, but you can't take it back out once it's in there. All right, we're gonna use kosher salt with this. So use it fairly liberally, to be honest with you. We'll, uh, we'll take a good heaping handful and throw that in and we'll give it and we'll give it one more. Again, you can always put more in later. You can't take it back out. So put plenty in, but don't overdo it to begin with. All right, time to fill it up with water and get it on the stove. Now that we have the potatoes boiling on the stove, we're gonna go ahead and chop up our onion here. So just one yellow onion, a sweet onion. Uh, you don't want anything super bitey. Uh, but otherwise, take your pick. In this case, we're going to do quarter inch to, to three eighths of an inch dice. Um, not super fine, but we don't want huge chunks of it either. This is going to sort of melt down anyway, to be honest with you, um, when we uh, make our roux. All done. We'll just wait on those potatoes to finish up and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, let's check on these potatoes. I'm just going to give them a stir every once in a while while they're starting to boil. Make sure that salt's evenly distributed. That's it for now. We'll be back in a few minutes. We've got her to boil now. Let's give it another stir. We just don't want any of them sticking to the bottom. It's not going to be too big of an issue in a non-stick pot, but it's still, let's just make sure these guys are all nice and moved around. I'll turn this down a little bit now that we got the heat kicked up. Sorry about that. Looks like we got a little too foggy on the camera. So unfortunately we're going to have to deal a little bit with, uh, with the fan noise. Check the tenderness of these. No, not there yet. Let's 
give these another quick stir. Let's check tenderness here. Hot tamale. Woo! Hot! But that's what we're after. Alright, we're good to go. We're going to drain these. I'm going to set them aside. We're going to get back to work on making that brew. So now it's time to saute the butter and the onion. We're going to do this over medium heat. We don't want to do this too high. We're not looking to brown the onion. We're really just looking more to sweat it. So we're going to toss one full stick of butter in here. You can use salted or unsalted. In this case, it doesn't really matter. We're not baking anything here. so And we did just put a ton of salt in the potatoes anyway, so salt belongs in this. So we're gonna put the butter in there. As you can see, this is the exact same pot that we were using before. Didn't even bother cleaning it. We've just got the, uh, the potatoes over there draining. One trick with those potatoes is if you get those right at the point where they are done the correct amount and they're, they're fairly soft and you don't want them to keep softening, you can put some cold water on top of them. So uh, while you've got them in the colander after they've drained, if you just uh, spray cold water on them out of the faucet, that'll slow down any additional cooking and sort of prevent it. You can do the same thing with pasta uh, if you ever need to do that. So that said, we're gonna go ahead and let this guy melt and I'm gonna toss in uh, the onions as well. So we've got those here, and you can see we're using the plastic whisk. We're going to use the non-stick friendly guy here. Don't beat up our pan too much. Like I said, we're not looking to brown these. We're really just looking to soften them up let some of their natural sweetness come out um, uh, and then really we're looking to melt the butter because we're going to add some flour here in a little bit to make a roux and I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, I'm going to let this go ahead and melt. Again, if you see these starting to brown, back off on the heat, maybe even pull the, uh, the pot off for a little while and let it cool down. Because again, we're just looking to sweat these. So sort of think that the, about the butter just slightly starting to bubble a little bit. Um, you'll hear a little bit of the sizzle, but you don't want this to be like you've had the heat cranked and you've got some oil in there and you're trying to deep fry something. That's not what we're after here. All right, we'll be back in a few. Okay, so the butter's fully melted at this point, and you can see this is about what we want. This temperature right here, we've got a little bit of bubble uh, with all of this, but we're not sauteing this really. We're not browning anything here. No caramelization is going to happen. So you just want to stir this every once in a while. Again, this is only going to take, you know, a few minutes, uh, five or so. We do want these to be pretty soft. You don't want to get into this soup and take a big bite full of semi-raw onion. That's, that's not what anybody's going to want. All right, we'll let that go for a little bit longer and then we'll come back with the flour. So we have these where we want them now. They're nice and soft. It's been about, I don't know, five, six, seven minutes, something like that. Good to go. Now we're gonna go in with the flour. So this is just a half a cup of all-purpose flour. We're gonna sprinkle it in a little bit. It's gonna be a little lumpy at first. No problem, that's what the whisk is for. Now you're gonna wanna stay on this. You're gonna wanna stir this fairly constantly. This will brown, so you may even want to turn your heat down a little bit. Because what we're looking to do here is sort of cook the taste out of the flour. Uh, you don't want it to be sort of doughy uh, flavored, but you don't want this to be brown. Uh, we're not making a dark brew here. Uh, and I keep saying the word brew. So what we're essentially doing is we're building the base for what's going to more or less be a cream sauce. So with this roux, uh, which is the mixture of uh, flour and butter, what it allows things to do is melt uh, and thicken to some degree, but without, uh, without separating. So if you were to just put cheese in this pot, cheddar cheese anyway, and heat it up and melt it all, what you're really going to end up with is cheese on the bottom and a bunch of oil on the top. And that's gross and disgusting. Nobody wants that. So by making this roux, when you put the cheese in with it and it melts, uh, even cheddar cheese, which does not melt well on its own, 
you're going to have that be a continuous consistency. It's going to be a nice even consistency and it's not going to separate. Um, so that in combination with the milk uh, is going to make for a nice cream, uh, creamy base that we're going to have here for our potato soup. And that along with the butter flavor and the onions and then we'll put some, uh, some pepper in of course. I, I love black pepper and, uh, and also some bacon bits you're going to have a pretty nice soup and this could not be easier as you can see. I mean, literally the only two things that you have to prepare, if you even want to call it that, is going to be the, uh, the onions that you see in here and the potatoes that we saw earlier. Everything else, you just pour it in. Uh, piece of cake. So I'm going to stay at this for another couple of minutes. Uh, you probably want to do this for around five minutes or so. Again, being careful not to let this brown, but you do need some heat on it. Uh, as we cook this, uh, the sort of flour flavor out of here. Um, all right, well, I'll see you in a few more as I stay at this. All right, so now we've got all of this nice and cooked down. Flour flavor is going to be gone at this point, and we didn't let this get brown. Next up, six cups of milk. Sounds like a lot, but that's really the base of the sauce for the soup. Two, four, and there's six. All right, so we want to stir this a good bit and then we want to crank the heat up a little bit because we're looking to boil it. Okay, so we cranked the heat up to the max now. We got it on high heat and we're going to stir this up. You want to keep stirring it for a couple of reasons. Uh, a, you want to make sure it doesn't get lumpy. Uh, since we just had that, that big ball of flour in there, basically. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you want to make sure nothing sticks to the bottom. This is going to be very happy to make a huge mess of the bottom of your pan, so you're going to want to stay on that. And while you're doing that, you have to watch it. I don't know if you've ever boiled milk before, but if not, it has a tendency to slowly increase in volume when you're you're about to boil it and you don't notice it and then all of a sudden you realize that it's at the absolute top of the pot and it's about to go over uh, the edge so you're going to want to keep an eye on this and if it gets close to that point you can certainly back off the heat a little bit or yank the pot off the heat uh, and take care of that but it's, it's going to be something you want to keep an eye on so you you almost want to constantly stir this thing i guess what i would say is um if you decide to leave it, don't leave the room uh, so that you can stay on this and not leave it for more than about 30 seconds at a time. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a mess on your hands either in the bottom of the pot with stuff stuck to it or all over the cooktop. All right, so once this gets to the boiling point, I'll come back. All right, so we're right at boiling. We're going to turn off the heat at this point. And we're going to go get those potatoes. I'm going to move this off the heat for just a minute while I go grab those so we don't get this too hot. All right, we'll put this guy back. We'll get all these potatoes in here. Oh. Give those a quick stir, just to get them distributed evenly before we put the cheese in there, which is gonna make it a little thicker. Next up is the cheese, and this is going to be, the recipe calls for a one cup, I believe. Just eyeball it, and I almost always put a little bit more in there. More cheese is almost always better. Uh, you can always add more cheese at the end anyway, uh, once you put it into your bowl. It actually looks nice as a garnish anyway. Then also we're going to put some crumbled bacon in it. You can use bacon bits if that's all you have, but the crumbled bacon is nice. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, just do watch the uh, oxygen packets in here. You don't want to leave that in your soup uh, and end up eating that or leave it in there while it's cooking. Uh, I think it calls for a half cup of this. Again, use as much or as little as you like. We'll give this a stir so we can get the, make sure the bottom stays clean, but also so we can get that cheese distributed. And there should be enough carryover heat here to melt all this cheese. That's one of the reasons why you get it to boiling. That should be no problem for us. 
All right, while that cheese is melting, we're gonna put in some pepper, again, to taste as much as or as little as you like. Also gonna use a little bit of seasoned salt, some Lowry's, again, to taste. We've already got some salt in here, so don't overdo it. But again, potatoes suck up a lot of salt, so you have to really go overboard to completely overdo it on the salt side. But I guess at the same time, keep in mind cheese has some salt in it, and bacon bits most certainly do. And at this point, you've, you've got your soup. It's, it's really that simple. It's completely done. Uh, way easier than the chili that we made uh, a couple of weeks ago. There it is, and I have not had dinner yet, and it's almost 8 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get this in a bowl. And there is said bowl. Isn't that beautiful? So if you want to garnish this with some cheddar cheese, maybe a little bit of sour cream, some of those bacon bits or bacon crumbles, and even some chives, uh, if you want to add a little bit of extra black pepper on the top, uh, more power to you, whatever you like. Again, check the uh, description down at the bottom in order to see the recipe and any additional ingredients that, uh, that you may need. Uh, and other than that, thanks for watching. Leave any comments down there if you've got any questions.